Razer's CES 2026 showcase highlights a shift toward a full-stack AI gaming ecosystem, bridging immersive hardware with powerful developer tools. The lineup features Project Ava, a holographic desk companion for real-time coaching, and Project Matoko, an AI-powered headset with integrated cameras. To support these experiences, Razer is providing the AI Developer Foundation, which includes the high-performance Forge AI Workstation, a portable AI Accelerator, and the Razer AI Kit, an open-source toolkit on GitHub designed to streamline the fine-tuning of over 280,000 local language models. All right, let's talk about Razer. At CES 2026, they didn't just show off some new gear they basically dropped a bombshell. The company that you and I know for its awesome gaming mice and keyboards, they're making a hard pivot, a complete top-to-bottom shift into artificial intelligence. And no, I'm not exaggerating here. The triple-headed snake is betting its entire future, not just on selling us peripherals, but on building the whole ecosystem for a world where gaming is native to AI. It is a huge, fascinating, and let's be honest, incredibly risky move. So here's how we're gonna break this all down. First up, we'll get the 30,000 foot view of this new AI universe. Then we'll meet your potential new AI buddies, the faces of this whole strategy. After that, we're gonna pop the hood and look at the powerful tools for developers building this future. We'll also see how all this tech is actually making their classic gaming gear even better. And finally, we'll tie it all together to really understand the scale of Razer's giant bet on AI. Okay, so to really get what Razer is trying to do here, you have to stop thinking about these as just individual product announcements. This isn't about a new headset over here and a new AI assistant over there. No, this is a whole set of interconnected pieces all designed to work together towards a single unified vision for a future where AI is baked into every single part of game. All right, let's get to the flashy stuff, the most visible consumer facing part of this whole plan. We're talking about the AI companions that are meant to be the main way you interact with this new ecosystem. Razer is literally giving its AI a face and a voice. Now, what's really cool here is how they're splitting this idea in two. On one hand, you've got Project Ava. Think of it as a stationary, physical buddy for your gaming setup. And on the other hand, you have Project Motoko, a wearable that takes Razer's AI out into the real world with you. So two totally different ways to achieve the same goal, having an AI companion with you all the time. So let's zoom in on Ava. You might remember it from last year's CES, where it was just this abstract software idea, like an esports coach. Well, this year, it's a real physical device. It's this sleek, cylindrical thing that sits on your desk and uses a pretty clever mirror system to project what looks like a five and a half inch animated hologram. The whole point is for it to feel like a presence, a partner, not just another app on your screen. And this isn't some one-size-fits-all Siri or Alexa. Razer is building what they're calling a persona engine. So you can see here, you get to choose your AI's personality. You could have Kira, who's like this enthusiastic anime-style companion, or Zane, a more stoic, serious character for competitive play. They've even got an officially licensed avatar of the esports legend Faker for elite-level coaching. The key idea is you pick the personality that clicks with you. But, and this is a big but, here's the reality check. The hardware looks amazing, but in the hands-on demos, the AI itself, which is currently running on the Grok language model, was, well, pretty glitchy. Reviewers said the responses felt canned and repetitive, sometimes just flat out wrong, like it couldn't identify a weapon in Battlefield 6 or got a Steam sale discount wrong. It's a perfect example of the gap between a super cool concept and a product that's actually ready. Okay, so if Ava is your AI for when you're at your desk, Project Matoko is designed to be your AI for everywhere else. This is basically Razer's answer to the whole smart glasses trend. It's a full-on wireless headset with dual cameras, its own Snapdragon chip to handle AI tasks right on the device, and it's built to work with all the big AI models out there. It's a seriously powerful wearable that's designed to see the world exactly as you do. So you might be asking why a headset and not glasses? Well, Razer's logic here is actually pretty solid. With headphones, you get way better audio quality and you can actually block out noise, unlike most open-ear smart glasses. The cameras are positioned at your ear level, which gives you a more natural eye-level point of view. And maybe the biggest reason of all, people are already totally comfortable wearing headphones for hours at a time. It's just a much easier sell for most people. Okay, so we've seen the flashy consumer gadgets, but how is Razer actually planning to build this entire AI universe? This next part is all about the engine room, 
the powerful stuff for developers that makes everything else even possible. The foundation for all of this is something called Razer AI Kit. The best way to think about it is like a software toolbox. It's a totally free, open source kit that lets developers run and tweak a huge library of AI models right on their own computers so they don't have to pay for expensive cloud services. Now, it's designed to work best on Razer's hardware, of course, but they're not locking anyone into it. Now, Razer isn't reinventing the wheel with AI Kit. It's built on some really powerful open source tech that's already out there, like VLLM to make the models run super fast, and Ray, which is great for scaling tasks across multiple GPUs. The whole goal is to give developers the kind of performance they'd expect from a massive cloud service, but right on their own desk, giving them total control and, importantly, privacy. And if AI Kit is the software toolbox, then this is the hardware workshop. Razer is basically selling the picks and shovels for the coming AI gold rush. On one side, you have the Forge AI workstation, an absolute beast for big enterprise-level projects, and on the other, a portable accelerator for developers who need that power on the go. And when I say the Forge is a beast, I mean it. This is not just a souped-up gaming PC. We're talking support for four professional-grade GPUs, true workstation CPUs like a Threadripper Pro, a massive amount of memory, dual 10-gig networking. This is a serious piece of machinery built for the heaviest AI workloads you can throw at it. But what about the solo developer? For them, Razer has teamed up with a company called Tenstorrent to create this compact AI accelerator. It uses a new chip based on the open source RISC-V design, and it just plugs into your laptop via Thunderbolt to turn it into a pretty capable AI rig. And what's really smart is the modular design. You can actually link up to four of them together so your power can grow as your projects get bigger. So with all this high-level talk about AI and developer platforms, you might be asking yourself, hey, what about the gaming gear? I thought Razer made mice and keyboards. Well, the good news is this new focus on AI is also bleeding directly into their core product lines, making the hardware that made them famous even better. A great example is Project Madison. Think of this as Razer's concept car. It's their vision for what a gaming chair could be. This thing is a full multi-sensory experience. It has high-definition haptics so you can feel the explosions, and it has TXX spatial audio speakers built right into the headrest. It's all about total immersion. And this is how that concept car idea actually makes it to you, the consumer. While Madison is the dream, the Escore V2 is the production model you can buy today, and it directly uses the ideas they came up with in their research, like this new Hyperflex lumbar system that actually moves and tracks your posture to support you plus new materials that are more durable and feel cooler during long gaming sessions. And then for the huge and growing cloud gaming market, there's the Wolverine V3. They actually developed this with LG, and it uses a brand new ultra-low latency Bluetooth technology to get response times under 2 milliseconds. That is absolutely critical for game streaming. It basically brings that pro-level esports-grade performance to your couch, and it even has built-in TV controls. Okay. Let's pull the camera all the way back now and look at the big picture. When you see all of these announcements together, the companions, the developer kits, the new hardware, it becomes crystal clear this isn't just a random collection of new products. It is one single, massive, and very cohesive bet on the future of AI. So this is it. This is the crucial point, the real key to understanding their entire strategy. Razer is building a vertically integrated AI stack. It all starts with the interface for you, the consumer. That's Project Ava and Motoko. That interface is then built on top of their open-source software, the AI Kit. That software, in turn, is designed to run best on their powerful hardware engines, like the Forge. And all of this tech ultimately circles back to create a better, more immersive gaming experience. See? Each piece supports the others. It's a complete, self-reinforcing loop. And what this all adds up to is a fundamental change in Razer's identity. They're trying to transform themselves from a company that sells cool products to gamers into a company that provides the entire AI platform for the future of gaming. It's a huge leap from being a hardware brand to being a full-stack ecosystem provider. Which leaves us with a big billion-dollar question. Is Razer genuinely building the future of gaming here, creating a platform that developers and players won't be able to live without? Or is this just an incredibly ambitious, incredibly expensive gamble on AI hype that could leave one of gaming's most beloved brands stretched too thin and out of touch with what gamers actually want? I guess only time will tell.